looked at question number 36, which is a combination of translating sentences into expressions, equations, and equalities, as well as solvent. So the question says, one half of the sum of the number of apples and six equals eight. How many apples are there? So in this instance, we have to actually create the equation. And then once we have the equation, we have to solve. So this is a perfect example of how you have to have that foundational sub skill laid down. One, you have to know how to actually translate the sentence. And then two, you actually have to know how to solve. All right, so let's go through and let's break it down so that we can create our equation. So it says one half of, so I know of course one half, that's a fraction of, of course, we know is an indication that what would be the multiply, the sum of. So this is going to be one caveat that you have to pay attention to. You won't see it that often, but you want to be aware of it when you see it. So, of course, we know sum means that we add, right? We know that means that. But if it's followed by the word of, that means whatever comes behind it is going to be grouped together in parentheses. All right, so it said the sum of the number of apples and six. So I know and is a reminder of what that I'm going to add. So that means whatever comes first is going to be the first value. Whatever comes after is going to be the second value. So it says the number of apples, which means we don't know what this particular value represents. So we're going to put a variable there. So I'm just going to use X. And then, of course, we have six equals. So we know that's where our equal sign goes. And then we have eight. All right, so let's go ahead and write it out in this raw form first, and then we'll simplify it. All right, so we have one half, and then I'm going to do a dot for times. All right, and remember, because it's the sum of something, that means that's going to go in parentheses, and we're going to have x plus six. All right, and then equals eight. All right, so not too shabby. This part is really where people kind of make the mistakes the most. So just be aware, once again, if you have one half of, so something times, and then the sum of, you see how we have two operations back to back? That means that whatever follows, the first operation needs to be grouped together because we're taking half of the group of the items versus just one thing, all right? And then from here, we are actually going to go ahead and solve. All right, so it's a couple different ways that we could do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break down the actual parentheses. I'm going to distribute just because when you teach shortcuts, it's not always going to work, especially if you don't have a one at the top of the fraction. So when we distribute, we're going to multiply whatever's on the outside times everything that's on the inside. So one thing that makes it a little bit easier for people is you can convert this fraction to a decimal or you can leave it in fraction form, another sub skill. So if we convert one half to a decimal, that's gonna give us 0 0.5. And then don't forget for this exam, um, you guys have a calculator, so you don't have to worry about doing the computation by hand. So I'm gonna say 0 0.5 times X and 0 0.5 times six. All right, so it has to be multiplied times everything in parentheses. Another mistake that people make, will make is they only do it times the first values. All right, so remember, anytime we have a number times a variable, we just stick them together. So that's 0 0.5x. And 0 0.5 times 6 gives us 3 is equal to 8. All right, so from here, now we have to solve because it says how many apples are there. And we know that apples are represented by what? The variable x. All right, so we do the opposite of what we see. So this is plus 3. We're going to minus 3 for both sides. All right, these are going to cancel out. I'm going to bring down my 0.5x. And then 8 minus 3 is 5. All right, and then we just divide both sides by 0 0.5. All right, those are going to cancel out. X is going to be equal to 10. All right, so the correct answer is going to be B. So again, another scenario where we had to combine two different skills. The first thing you had to do was actually translate the sentence into your actual equation. And then from there, you had to solve. And we knew we had to solve because it says how many apples are there. If it was just translating, it would have stopped at the first sentence. We wouldn't have the second sentence. So just make sure that you can recognize when you need to do it and how to actually combine those skills. Let's take a look at question number 37, which is an example of solving equations in one variable. So when we say in one variable, you see how we have X and X is the same variable, that's one variable. So you guys will not be faced with questions 
for this exam that include by x and y x y and z it's only going to be one single variable all right so here we have 4x plus 2 minus 8x is equal to 10. all right so the goal is to get 1x by itself and figure out what is the value of it in order to make it true so the first thing i always like to do is identify my like terms and like terms are just values that can actually be combined everything that we see here can't actually be combined through addition and subtraction you know how to have that saying apples and oranges so for example you see how this four is attached to this x and eight is attached to x that means that these are like terms so we're going to go ahead and underline those because i know that i can combine these two all right, you see how we have two and 10. These are considered constants. They're just numbers that aren't attached to anything. Two is always gonna be two. 10 is always gonna be 10. So we're gonna circle those. So that lets me know that those can be combined together. So in some form of fashion, four X and eight X need to be combined and two and 10 need to be combined. All right, so remember the goal is always to do what? The goal is always to get the variable on one side equal to some value on the opposite side. So there's always tons of different ways that you can approach it. It just depends on what you prefer to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the two to the opposite side, and then I'll combine my like terms um, on the left side. So remember, anytime we're working with equations, you always do the inverse or the opposite of what you see. So if this is plus two, that means in order for me to move it to the opposite side, I'm going to have to do what? Do the opposite, which is subtract. So if we go ahead and write out 4x plus 2 minus 8x is equal to 10. All right, so again, because this is a plus 2, in order for me to get rid of it, I'm going to do the opposite, which is subtract. All right, so we're going to say minus 2. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other side. The equal sign is a reminder of that because it has to be balanced. All right, so those are going to cancel out. I'm going to bring down my values. All right, so we're going to have 4x minus 8x. So remember what follows. This minus sign was in front of the 8x. People will make the mistake and try to bring this plus sign down, but remember that's attached to the 2. The 2 is gone. All right, so make sure you don't make that mistake. All right, and then 10 minus 2 is going to be 8. All right, so of course these are like terms, so we can go ahead and do these operations. So you just really focus on the numbers. That's where the actual math comes in and the variables stay the same. So if I say 4 minus 8, that's going to give me a negative 4, and then we just bring down our x. All right? And then lastly, in order to get the x by itself, I know that 4 and x are joined by multiplication. How do I know that? Because there's nothing in between them. So anytime you see a number and a variable stuck together like that, they're married through multiplication. So if we do the inverse, inverse of marriage is what? Divorce. The inverse of multiplication is what? Division. So we're going to separate those two. So we're going to divide both sides by a negative. All right, these are going to cancel out, and then 8 divided by negative 4 is going to give me negative 2. So don't stress too much about integers. For the exam, um, a four-function calculator is actually built into it, so you'll be able to do like the actual computation on the calculator if you don't know how to do it by hand. So of course, in this case, the answer is going to be C. All right, so one thing I always tell people as well, if you have a hard time figuring this out, the original way you can always work backwards from your answer so because the actual test is multiple choice what you can do is you can take each of these answers plug them in for x simplify and then of course whichever one gives you the correct answer in this case which would be c that's how you can get the answer as well so i always tell people have content have strategy if you're in a time crunch and you don't have time to learn and retain this process you can always work backwards from the answers that they give you and you'll be good to go Let's take a look at question number 38, which is an example of solving equations or inequalities in one variable. So anytime we're dealing with inequalities in terms of the basis of how we solve, super similar to equations, only slight changes may have to be made in certain circumstances. All right, so we have 3B plus 14 is less than or equal to 21. So anytime we're solving for value, whether we have an equation or inequality, the goal is to get the variable by itself. Right, and we do that by combining like terms. So we have 3b, we have 14, and we have 21. So 3b, of course, is the only term that's attached to a variable, so that's by itself. And then we have 14 and 21, which are both constants. So I always like to recognize what is actually going to be connected or combined together, so it makes it easier to go through and do the math. All right, and remember the goal is to get the variable by itself. So if we bring everything down, 
we have 3b plus 14 is less than or equal to 21. All right, so we are going to move the 14 to the other side. So we always do the opposite of what we see. So because this is plus 14, if I want to move it to the opposite, which is subtraction, so I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. All right, these are going to cancel out. I'm going to bring down my 3b. And 21 minus 14 is going to give me 7. All right, anytime I have a number and a variable joined together without a space in between, they have been multiplied together or they're married. So if we do the opposite of what we see, we're going to divorce them or divide them. So we're going to divide both sides by three. All right, these threes are going to cancel out. And then we're going to bring down our value. So here we have B is less than or equal to seven thirds. So normally when you guys end up with an answer as a fraction in this scenario normally the answer choices are already in that form so you don't want to go beyond that just always reference how the answers are given so you would know if you would have to go through a simplify or change it to a decimal um you'll know based on what you see all right so of course we know it's not a we know it's not c because of the zeros so with b and d we just have to be careful because we have to know what the direction of the symbol so in this case the answer would be d